Well, I first learned of Mary Fisher with the incredible historic speech she gave at the Republican That's National Convention. I would never have asked to be HIV positive, but I believe that in all things there is a purpose, and I stand before you and before the nation gladly. That particular convention was one noted for its rhetoric of intolerance. And that was uh, very uncomfortable for any of us who happened to believe in a welcoming, diverse Republican Party or America. And um, certainly uh, she changed the face of AIDS in ways that I thought was incredibly important, both in who she was and in how she spoke. The entire speech is, is brilliant, and everyone should read it, and um, she should give it again, actually. <laughs> and I hope that by the time this airs, she will have given it at the International Conference this summer. I remember her speaking about being human and, and, and really doing such a good job of explaining that people who contracted HIV were human beings and that they didn't do anything explicitly or intentionally or extraordinarily different, wrong, derelict, or anything else. Mary Fisher, her speech really silenced everyone. And it was just stunning because she came forward and said, I have HIV. That was the first time we really received permission to speak out loud about HIV. And that's how much of an effect, I, and I have no clue if Mary even realizes what she did for the HIV community. And Mary and I uh, would both represent, should I say, the same wing of the Republican Party. It, I was very active on HIV AIDS legislation as a member of Congress. She was my kind of a voice on behalf of uh, education, awareness, and action related to AIDS. And it was pretty important at that point in time because we were dealing with a Republican Party that was uncomfortable dealing with HIV AIDS. Mary made conversations about AIDS comfortable because it was an ability to recognize that AIDS impacted all elements of the American population, men, women, gay, straight, Republican, Democrat, rich, poor, everybody. I'll never forget her taking my call. I'll never forget her answering the phone, which astounded me. Um, talking to me, which also astounded me, but then inviting me to her home, a stranger, a perfect stranger who was just in need of a lifeline. And so when I get those calls now, I take them and I see the people and I try to do the same thing that she did for me because it is still in 2012, the very same thing it was for both of us many years ago. People who are newly diagnosed today find themselves back in that same hole of isolation and fear and needing a lifeline. So I try to pass on what she gave to me, um, and I know that those people pass it on too.